Hello everyone, and welcome back to Seriously Sports, the show that has to take a moment to give an extra special round of applause to the New York Jets for embarrassing the fuck out of themselves on national television in prime time. So scrap the intro because today we're just diving right in. Jets, what the fuck was that? I mean seriously. Oh my god, he said it! You guys actually put up more of a fight with your third string quarterback in there. Sam Darnold, dude. It's okay. We won't overreact about your future after one bad game against the league's toughest defense, but holy shit. Five turnovers? That's on Jameis Winston's level. Y'all have to forgive me, I had the worst luck in fantasy this past week with Patrick Mahomes leaving the game and a couple of roster fuck ups on my end. It all came down to this game and I literally just needed the Jets to not be awful. Not too much to ask, right? You'd imagine. But no, the Jets coming off that win over the Cowboys apparently wanted to remind everyone of who they are because let's face it, The Patriots are the real measuring stick of progress in the AFC. If you can't beat them, or even put up a fucking fight, you're not going anywhere. The game was over before halftime. The Jets could have replaced their entire team with a box of fucking kittens and still did better than that. And to make matters worse, they put the Monday Night Mike on their franchise quarterback in prime time against the league's best defense and let them air it in real time. What a world-class embarrassment for the whole organization. I called it last week, stating that the Pats would be ready for Adam Gase and his Jets, and boy was I right. So the Pats are undefeated so far, but are they really? If you glance at their schedule, you quickly realize that they have had the softest, sorriest, saddest cupcake schedule imaginable. They played the Steelers week one and embarrassed them. I was actually in Tennessee during that. It was really great. We had fun. But then they played the Dolphins, Jets, Bills, Redskins, Giants, and Jets again. Who made this schedule? Here, you guys won the Super Bowl, so how about a cute and cuddly cakewalk back to the big game next year, huh? Props to the Pats for winning 17 of the last 19 games versus the Jets, including the last consecutive eight games. Adam Gase, way to prove you're still as average as you appeared before beating the Cowboys. Dolphins Bills, this one's a twofer. Both teams, what the fuck was that? Buffalo, you're supposed to have one of the best defenses in the league and you allowed the game to get that close? Never mind that, Josh Allen didn't turn the ball over, but he also didn't throw a touchdown pass until the fourth quarter. The team as a whole didn't reach the end zone until the fourth quarter. And Miami, y'all better stop playing Fitz. Because he's gonna fuck around and win a game and fuck the whole tank job up. As a fan, you never like seeing your team lose. But if they get halfway through a lost season, i.e. halfway to the number one overall pick, the last thing they need is for Fitz to turn the fucking magic on and win a game or two or fucking eight or whatever as he's been prone to do throughout his career. So put him back on the bench, let Rosen sink or swim, and ride the tank out. Props to the Bills for starting the season five and one for the first time since 2008. Chiefs Broncos, Andy Reid. What the fuck was that? You got Patrick Mahomes' kneecap dislocated. What were you thinking calling that play? Oddly enough, Joe Buck had literally just finished saying, I can't imagine they'd do a QB sneak here with that bad ankle. And then sure enough, they did it. First down and the QB's down. Great fucking job. You killed my fantasy day. And then I got to watch the former Dolphin Matt Moore step in and add to my misery throwing a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. By the way, don't expect that kind of success out of him in primetime against the Packers. Matt Moore has historically shrunk in the big lights. I don't put it past him to do it here. But hey, props to Andy Reid for notching his 200th regular season win. I hope it was worth it. 
49ers Redskins. Nothing to call out here, really. It was an ugly game on an ugly day. Looked like a slip and slide commercial. And honestly, it was kind of funny watching guys hit the ground and slide like penguins. Especially when they weren't trying to. Hilarious. Props to the Niners for starting their season 6-0 for the first time since 1990. Way to go. Cards Giants. Giants, do I even have to say it? I guess I'll say it. What the fuck was that? That was a very winnable game. You guys realize the Cardinals are still basically learning to do everything, right? And yet, Arizona went up two scores on them early, running the no-huddle offense with a rather strong performance from running back Chase Edmonds. Daniel Jones also threw an early pick, and the Giants' defense reverted back to their soggy toilet paper on a graham cracker form. I guess they couldn't live with me being wrong for more than a week. Interestingly enough, New York owned the cards in the staff battle, but stats don't tell the whole story. And it was really just about the Cardinals being effective in executing their offense. The cool thing is, they're only going to get better. Edmonds has provided a seemingly consistent running game, which has allowed the Cards to balance out their attack, and the results are telling. Of their 18 first downs they picked up throughout the game, 8 were by rush, 8 were by pass, and the last 2 were by penalty. And they won the time of possession battle early in the game. So I believe they can win with this formula. Props to the Cards for the win, Chase Edmonds for his career-high 3 touchdown day. Good hunting. Texans Colts. I really don't have anyone to call out in this game. It was close, as all 11 of Deshaun Watson's career losses have been, and the Colts are for real. They have their shit together, and Brissett is doing a pretty damn good job. Props to him for his four touchdown passes, a career high day for him, and the Colts for the victory. Raiders Packers. This game would have been more competitive if not for the turnovers by the Raiders. The Raiders actually didn't play bad. Derek Carr was 22 for 28 for almost 300 yards, two scores and a pick. Josh Jacobs had over a buck 20 on the ground. Suffice to say they were playing ball. But I can't really call him out for this one because it would be hard for anyone to beat the Packers when Aaron Rodgers throws five touchdown passes and he runs one in. Which, by the way, made him the fastest quarterback in NFL history to throw 350-plus career touchdown passes. He did it in 172 games. Great job, Aaron. The Packers are 15-3 and versus AFC West opponents since 2002. Vikings-Lions. No one to call out here. Actually, I'm still just astounded that a team under a defensive-minded head coach can be so heavily tilted towards their offense. This really turned into a shootout, and unfortunately for the Lions, it did not happen in prime time or else they probably would have won. Although it wasn't a terrible day for them, with Marvin Jones setting a franchise record catching four touchdown passes, they just couldn't hang in there and fell to Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. So props to the Vikes and Kirk Cousins. Keep it going. Jags Bengals. Bengals. I can't even say it right now. <laughs> Zach Taylor has fucked up the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, obviously, there's a lot that goes into it, but it'll end up becoming a black mark on his resume. There are issues all over the team, but the Bengals shouldn't be as bad as they are. Because they returned with many of the same players they had the year before, and last year they were a 7-9 team, and they were a competitive 7-9 team. Now, I won't rail against Andy Dalton, because Andy Dalton is the same as he's ever been. A very middle-of-the-road quarterback who flashes moments of excellence. What more can we really expect? He was a second-round pick, and if we're to believe older guys like Fran Tarkenton, who said, if you were a quarterback and you weren't picked in the first round, they didn't think you could play. So I think that still applies nowadays in the modern era. If you're not, if you're a quarterback that's not picked in the first round, they don't really think you can play. They think you've got potential. So in that case, he's actually done much better than most people thought he would. We can't excuse his piss poor play against the Jaguars, but at least it made it so that his numbers reflect how very middle of the road he is because he now has the same number of interceptions as he does touchdown passes. Eight all. 
These Bengals are so bad, an argument could be made that they too are tanking. But I know Andy Dalton isn't, because I'm sure he knows that if they do successfully tank, Cincy is drafting his replacement, signaling the end of the Andy Dalton era in Cincinnati. But what exactly happened to this team? Well, for one, they lost their top two offensive linemen. One retired right before the season, the other got hurt in the preseason and hasn't been back since. Because of this, they can't get their run game going. Joe Mixon, who is an extremely talented running back and was a thousand yard rusher last year, has been non-existent because they can't block. By the time he gets handed the ball, defenders are meeting him at the line of scrimmage. It's like a, a, the ball is a bag full of metal shards and the line of scrimmage is security at the airport. And when the buzzer goes pop, nigga, you stop. <laughs> and boy, does he. Pretty triumphant win for the Jags who just lost their best player and have been running with their backup quarterback. Props to them, but they need to learn how to put points on the board early and they might be able to do so with the return of Nick Foles, who has returned to practice, but we shall see. The Bengals dropped to 0-7 for the first time since 2008. Rams-Falcons. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one. Let me just say the Falcons season is over. Fans, prepare for a full reboot next year. It's done. Dan Quinn's probably on his way out, and they are going to look to turn the page. Next chapter. Chargers, Titans. Chargers, Chargers, Chargers. How is it that y'all keep ending up here? It's always a tough loss when you lose by one score and cough the ball up at the goal line. Terrible fate. But hey, you gave Tannehill his highest yardage total since week three of 2016. So props to him and to the Titans. I'm not sure why, but as a Dolphins fan, I'm rooting for Tannehill's success. I guess because I've always felt that a good coach can win with Tannehill and all he's ever needed was a good coach. And a change of scenery, an opportunity to prove himself by actually having to work for it and compete. Opportunities that were never afforded to him in Miami. So props to him and the Titans for the win. Saints Bears. Bears, what the f was that? The Bears have to be reeling from this one. It was just a sloppy game and continues to raise the question whether or not Mitch Trubisky is the guy. And it has to hurt, not just because of the other quarterbacks that went in that same draft, your Patrick Mahomes and such, but because the Bears traded up to get Trubisky, who I don't think many other teams valued like that. Then again, we saw something similar with Daniel Jones and the Giants this year, but their investment is already looking better than Trubisky. So that's a tough break. Props to the Saints and Teddy Two Gloves, who has now won eight of his last nine road starts. And finally, Eagles Cowboys. Eagles, what the f was that? A talented team that was coming off a loss to a winless team and you guys don't show up prepared to play? Wentz threw a pick, the Eagles had three fumbles lost, they were beaten in the time of possession battle, everything about this is rough. We all know Carson Wentz is a talented quarterback, but damn if it doesn't look like his team really wants to play for him. Let's face it, they were ready to run through a wall into hell for Nick Foles. They built a shrine to that man, and then the organization erected a fucking statue of him outside their building, and now your franchise quarterback has to walk past that every day on his way in and know that his team won a Super Bowl without him. I feel a lot of resentment from all sides here. Obviously, Wentz has the higher upside, but we won't know which quarterback was the right one to keep for a while. I heard somebody on TV say, well, how's it going down there in Jacksonville in reference to that, but that's bullshit and you know it since the man broke his fucking collarbone in week one. That has nothing to do with how good he is as a player or what he meant to that team. But if we're going to put it that way, how's it going in Philly anyways, pompous bitch. All right, let's do the picks. Washington, Minnesota in Minnesota. If it were on Sunday at 1 p.m., I'd give it to the Vikings hands down, but it's not. It's the Thursday night game in primetime, streamed on Amazon, etc. Kirk has historically not done well in those kind of lights, and this feels like the perfect trap game for him. 
This is very interesting. There's a lot of storylines in this one because you got Kirk Cousins going against his former team. You have Case Keenum going against his former team. You also have Adrian Peterson, who's a, a Redskin, going against his former team. So a lot of storylines tied up in this one. It should be a very emotional game. I actually kind of can't wait. But uh, give me Washington sneaking this win with Case Keenum and AP elevating their current team past their former team if only just for one night. Seahawks Falcons in Atlanta. The Seahawks are bruised from that matchup against the Ravens and the Falcons season is over, so I expect Seattle to right the ship in this one. They're probably gonna roll right over them. Give me Seattle. Browns Colts in Indy. The Colts are just a better team, so I'll take them at home over the visiting Broncos. I hope that Cortland Sutton records a few Big catches, maybe a couple touchdowns. That'd be really cool. I'd like that. Bucks Titans in Nashville. This one could be some fun. Bucks are in rough shape following that performance in London. Conversely, the Titans are feeling pretty good with Tannehill actually providing competent play at the quarterback position. I like the Titans in this one. They're at home with the stingier defense and more consistent quarterback play. Give me the Titans. Cardinal Saints in NOLA. As much as I've enjoyed the cards in recent weeks, uh, they've won three straight, right? Something like that. I've got to give this one to the Saints. Better defense at home. <laughs> Bengals Rams in LA. Uh, it's kind of no contest here. It's not even a competition. Give, of course, the fucking Rams are going to crush the Bengals. Should be a really fun game to watch. If you have fantasy players, I actually have to start. I'm starting Jared Goff as my fantasy quarterback because remember Patrick Mahomes is still down, but he returned to fucking practice somehow after dislocating his kneecap. But rolling with uh, Jared Goff this week because he's got that great matchup. Should be fun to watch. Give me the Rams by a lot. Eagles, Bills playing in Buffalo. Now this should be a very interesting one talking about some good defense being played by the bills i don't know if the eagles are ready to right their ship their wrongs i don't know man i don't know that the team's ready to rally behind carson wentz yet i don't know if he's shown enough to be a capable leader of this team they they clearly don't believe in him the same way they believed in nick Foles. so that's really interesting i think the bills defense is gonna gonna give them some hell give them fits i like the bills to win at home if not by a lot <laughs> Chargers Bears in Chicago in the Windy City now. I can't get the fucking thing to open, so I'm trying to find out. Okay. Yeah, there it goes. Good weather. Looks like it's going to be a clean day. Uh, I don't believe in Mitch Trubisky. They've got a tough defense, but I feel like if the Chargers can get up early, then they're going to win that game. I like Phillip Rivers to maybe get it fucking figured out this week. So give me the Chargers over the Bears in Chicago. If the weather were, would have been like inclinate, then I would have given it to the Bears because it would have been gritty and it would have been all about the defense. But I like the Chargers in this one. Go ahead. Giants-Lions in Detroit. I think Detroit's actually much better than their, than their uh, standings make them look. They're 2-3-1 and one right now. Unfortunately, like they just have not been able to hold it together. Now, the funny thing is they're going to be playing in the rain, though. So I think that's going to prove to be a problem, which will probably end up giving the Giants the edge because they do get Saquon Barkley back. Barkley's going to be out there, going to mess him up. He only needs like one or two big runs to really wreak havoc on this team. So tell you what, give me the Giants by a little. Go ahead. <laughs> Jets Jaguars in Jacksonville. Now, this should be fun. I actually live in Jacksonville, so I get to experience a lot of this shit firsthand. Minshew mania and all that shit. We actually moved here the same year the Jags went to the AFC Championship game, so we really got to see what the city was like when the team was winning, and the difference was noticeable. This should be pretty cool, as Jacksonville still has the ninth-ranked offense somehow, despite the fact that they've been playing with their, uh, their backup quarterback. But they have been running the ball really well. Leonard Fournette came back ready to play this year. So I expect them to be able to do that sort of thing. Of course, Greg Williams is going to be trying to give Gardner Minshew hell out there as the Jets defensive coordinator. 
but I still like Jacksonville to take this one. That's if Gardner Minshew's playing because it could be Nick Foles out there, which nobody has been nobody's been planning for. So that would be interesting. Either way, I like the Jaguars in this one. It's going to be mostly cloudy, but it's going to be, you know, a little bit humid. We're talking about a high of 88, low of 71. It's going to be typical Jacksonville weather, so it's going to feel pretty good. Jags are going to feel right at home. They're going to play ball. Give me the Jags. Panthers, 49ers. Ah, ah, that's a tough one. Four and two Panthers over the, excuse me, versus the 6-0 49ers. The last few times they've met, Panthers have come out on top two of the last three times. They're going to be playing in beautiful weather. It's going to be sunny, 74 degrees. I'm sure San Fran's going to be taking it to them. If they can get their passing game working out, they'll take it to them. And they've, they've got a solid defense, a stingy-ass defense, man. It's been a large part of why, they've, the, why they're winning right now. So go ahead and give me San Fran. <laughs> Raiders Texans in Houston I like how rowdy the Raiders are this year but ah they're not the Texans they're not gonna beat the Texans give me the Texans <laughs> Browns Patriots is this one even serious yeah Pat's gonna take it to them they're playing in Foxborough it's gonna be raining it's Patriots game Packers Chiefs on Sunday night. It's going to be mostly cloudy. They're playing at Arrowhead. I honestly think this will probably go the way of the Packers because the Chiefs are probably going to end up having to start Matt Moore. Matt Moore is not a starting quarterback. He is one of the best backups in history. He has been known to come off the bench and do phenomenally well, but he is not known to do the same thing when he's starting. I know this because I'm a Miami fan. And he was the long-time backup. In fact, he was in Miami before Tannehill got there and probably should have had the starting job. He had the starting job in 2011. He probably should have had it in 2012 as well to give Tanny a chance to acclimate to being a starting quarterback or being a quarterback in the NFL at all. Either way, that's what Matt Moore proved during his time there, and he became comfortable being a backup. So I expect him to shrink in these lights the same way he did in 2016 with the Dolphins when they went to the playoffs. He looked okay, because I was actually at the game that Tannehill originally got hurt at, and Matt Moore stepped in, threw, threw a couple bombs. It looked great. The following week, not so great, whatever. And then they went into that playoff game against the Steelers, got embarrassed. It was a fucking shame. So I kind of expect something similar to happen here, because you know that uh, Green Bay's offense is humming. They can't stop. They've got a, a great ground game. They've got receivers. They've got Aaron Rodgers. Everything's coordinated really well. Matt LaFleur is doing a hell of a job. So, you know, we can't we can't even be doubting this man anymore. Not the way we doubt Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor fucking sucks. No offense, Zach. Well, some offense, dude. You kind of destroyed that team that was kind of working under Marvin Lewis. At least they were getting some regular season wins. This is just a damn shame. And the worst part is, you know, you're crashing and burning with that team and still trying to get this quarterback to play for you when he knows that if you end up with an early pick, you're going to replace him. So, geez, man. Either way, give me Green Bay in the, in the Sunday night matchup. I think it's theirs. Wow, I didn't even notice that was the Monday night game. Holy shit. Not Packers, Chiefs, but the actual Monday night game is Dolphins, Steelers. I don't even know if I want to watch that. That's fucking embarrassing. Oh, man. So, it's not even a competition. You already know. It's the Steelers. The Steelers are likely going to win this game. I think they get Mason Rudolph back, so they're not going to be starting their third string un undrafted rookie quarterback. Uh, so, it should easily go to the Steelers. It would be kind of crazy if Miami decided to turn it around in this game. But who the fuck knows? Either way, it's going to be partly cloudy. They're playing in Pittsburgh. I expect the Steelers to roll right over the Dolphins. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and listening to me. It means the world. Don't forget to check me out on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram at Seriously Savak. But there is also a dedicated Seriously Sports YouTube channel now. So I can upload my episodes there for your convenience. Tell your friends, keep playing fantasy, and thanks for listening. 
Ah, you're still hanging in there with me. Must have really dug what you were hearing. That's nice of you. And seeing as how you're still here and means you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to subscribe and ding the little bell so that you are the first to know when new ones come out. Don't forget to share with your friends, and as always, thanks for watching.